วันนี้ครับรายการร้อยแปดดนตรีในช่วงเรดซีของผมนะครับวันนี้ผมจะคุยกับนักดนตรีผมบอกขอเรียกเป็นนักดนตรีนะเขาเป็นทั้งมือกีตาร์ทั้งมือเปนโนนะครับเป็นอัจฉริยะคนหนึ่งที่ผมว่ายังไม่มีคนที่2ในโลกนะครับที่เล่นในสไตล์เดียวกับเขาในแบบความคิดเดียวกับเขานะครับผมกําลังนั่งอยู่กับสแตนลีย์จอร์แดนครับโอเคไอการอัศจรรย์บ้างเถอะยูมิวสิกไลฟ์ When you was young, I've been doing music as far back as I can remember. I okay. <laughs> started taking piano lessons. I studied classical piano from the age of seven, okay. but before that, I was already playing, composing, and we had a piano in the house, and that piano was my friend. Uh -huh. And I used to spend a lot of time in there just playing and exploring. Mm -hmm. The music was a really creative thing for me. And then, when I started taking lessons. You know, I started to learn the notation and the fingering mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I already had a relationship with the music okay. just because I started just playing because I loved it. Mm -hmm. Before you have a lesson, you play that before and you compose. Yes. Is it like yes. a, at the five year old sounding? Yeah, starting around five. I think uh, the first song I ever wrote. I think it was, I was about five years old. I used to make um, animated cartoons in books, like you know, you flip really? the pages and you draw wow. pictures on okay. each book, you know, uh -huh. on each page. And so I used to make my own cartoons like that in books. Wow, you have a soundtrack you know, for that. So I made, I composed to make soundtracks for my animations. Your piano is the first instrument. Yeah. yeah. And when you play the guitar. So I started playing guitar at 11, oh, and wow. what happened? Was I started to get attracted to music where the guitar was really important, mm -hmm. like blues, uh, yeah. rock and roll, okay. like soul guitar, rhythm guitar Which stuff. Which band like, can, can um, you tell me some artists? Like um, the R and B guitar okay. that you would hear, like on a track by Curtis Mayfield or James Brown, or a okay. lot of that kind of funky, okay. Okay. you know. And um, Jimi Hendrix was my favorite, you really? know. And, Oh, and wow. um, Carlos Santana oh, was huh? another favorite of okay. mine.
What does music mean and feel to you? Well, music is the, the number one thing for me is music is a way of life. Because what I found is that in order to be my best as a musician, okay. I have to live my life in the best possible way. And so that means things like, you know, like getting enough sleep and, okay. you know, um, taking care of my emotions, mm -hmm. taking care of my body and my mind, you know. Mm -hmm. And I notice a difference between like when I take care of myself and when I don't take care of myself, uh -huh. then I notice a difference in the quality of my music. Oh. And so the music is, is a, like a guidance to guide me on, on the path of, of a better life. Yeah. And I might think, oh, I'm playing really great. Uh -huh. And then I make some improvement mm -hmm. in my life. Uh -huh. And then the music gets even better. Like, oh, I didn't know that I could get to that next level. And, and so that's why I say it's, it's, it's a way of life and ultimately it's a spiritual path for me because what I find is that the music takes me beyond all the assumptions that we make about the world like, like um, you know the mental grid that we calculate with our intellect uh -huh. and the feelings that, we're, that we get addicted to. Um, there's always something beyond, there's always something more, there's always something deeper. Like in the world, there's the obvious world that's easy to, to see and easy to understand. Uh -huh. And that, you know, the whole idea that like, you know, the table, <laughs> if we think that the table is solid, you know. Okay. But music takes you in between the cracks okay. of the atoms and shows you that, that really it's all about vibration. And, and vibration is all about energy. Mm -hmm. And so it, this, the whole key to understanding the universe mm -hmm. is understanding how, how energy works. Okay. And so, so I found that music teaches me about energy. And so the more that I understand the way of energy, then the more I can evolve as a spiritual person because I don't get stuck in, 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 the, in the world of matter. I can get, like I say, I can get in between the molecules. How come for the your magic tapping nobody played that before? Well, you know, after a few years of playing guitar, okay. and I got really comfortable with pick style on okay. guitar, and I advanced in my rock playing and in my jazz playing. Okay. And what happened was I started wanting to play more independent lines, mm. thinking like a piano player. Can you explain me on your guitar for now? Yes. As you know, okay. you need two hands to play guitar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because one hand holds holds it down and selects uh, the yeah. notes, mm -hmm. then the other hand creates the energy to vibrate the strings. Okay. So in this technique, I'm using hammer-on, so I hit the string against the fret, mm -hmm. so I can play with just one hand. And I can use the same technique with my right hand. two hands independently. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this approach because you have the independence. Mm -hmm. of the hands. Oh, and right. once I started to really experiment with different techniques, I could appreciate the advantage mm -hmm. of having the simple, mm -hmm. you know, logic mm -hmm. okay. on the okay. on the fingerboard. So the two, the technique and the tuning work together. Mm. It's not easy to start to play tapping two hand independent? Well, if you get the strings down low, it's important okay. to have low action. So my strings are close to the fingerboard. and. You know, the technique that I showed you, 
is based on hammer-ons. I mean, all guitar players know about hammer-ons. Okay. We all use hammer-ons. But usually we use it in between the normal notes. So we pick and occasionally we hammer. And also there's a technique called a pull-off, where you go like that, you know. So it's not that it's fundamentally new. What it is is the idea of taking these familiar techniques like hammer-ons, pull-offs, that are normally an adjunct, normally added on to the conventional techniques, and elevating them to a complete technique. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm calling the touch technique. Do you have a secret to keep a balance when you play? Because uh, a lot of players when play uh, hammer on, is not enough balancing. One of the things that I do is I practice mm. playing uh, lots of scales. Okay. And I wish I had something more exciting to tell you than that, but you know that's a, a lot of what I do. So I'll do, for example, uh, piano exercises okay. like the, from the book okay. by Hannon. Mm. 